College of Engineering. On Northeastern's campus, we have over 50 research centers all throughout campus. Um, research is one of our four pillars of experiential learning, so a lot of students um, get involved in research at some point in their four or five years here. Um, one of my friends is actually doing research on campus right now. He's an engineering major and he's doing some type of like phosphorus database collection thing. I really don't know what that means, but it sounds really cool. Um, at the end of each school year, we have RISE, which is a student exhibition, so students can showcase all of the amazing research that they've been doing throughout the year. Um, there's two main ways to get, get involved with research. The most common way is to reach out to your professor. So a lot of times professors are doing research on the side. And if you reach out to them, you can participate in research that way. Or you can go onto your NEU student portal, look for on-campus jobs, and then go to research positions. And then there are a lot of research positions there as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any questions about research or engineering? I will try my best. General question. What's yeah. the ratio of men to women here for the undergraduate? Um, I want to say like 49 to 51. So we're going to be walking through Egan. Um, just try to keep your voices down to be courteous to the students who are working in there. But that's all I have to say. Here on campus, which is fraternity sorority life. 
Um, so about 12% of our student body population is involved in some type of Greek organization. So it's there for you if you want to do it, but if you don't, you're not going to feel pressured or left out of anything. Um, over there to my right, um, we have the Community Service Center. So community service and service learning is also one of our four pillars of experiential learning. Um, so a lot of students will be involved in some type of community service project or a service learning class. Um, over there we have Thrive, which is the Center for Financial Independence. So a lot of times students will go on co-op, they're earning a lot of money and they really don't know what to do with it. So the students in Thrive, which are a lot of finance students, they'll help you manage your money, balance your budgets, and even on a more complex level, they'll help you invest your money. So that's something cool that we offer. Food? It's really good. Um, the dining halls are really good in my opinion. Um, when we go to Sets in East a little bit later on the tour, um, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but they have like a little bit of everything there. There's three dining halls on campus, but Sets in East is like my favorite because they have a lot of variety. They have like a pasta station, a deli station, a meat station, a grill station, a vegan vegetarian station, a salad bar, a fruit station, a waffle maker, a dessert bar. They literally have everything. Um, so I was always in Sets in East. We're gonna productions and student groups will have performances in there as well. I'm part of MBSA, like I said earlier, and our sister organization, NASA, which is the African Student Organization, do this like amazing um, dance show slash fashion show type. Um, we have guest speakers that will come in Blackman as well. So we had, this past year we had Amy Poehler, Amy Schumer, Kevin Spacey, um, one of the actresses from Orange is the New Black. Her name is Maritza on the show, if you watch it. But we'll just have a lot of guest speakers come throughout the year and impart their knowledge and wisdom on the student body. On the second floor of L Hall, we have a sacred space. So if you ever want to practice your religion in privacy for any reason, you could do that on the second floor of L Hall. Um, but that's pretty much it. We're going to be heading this way. This is Krentzman's Quad. It's the oldest part of campus and it's surrounded by some academic buildings. Um, behind me we have Richards Hall. This is home to the College of Science and it's important for two reasons. One, it has a student financial services office in there. So if you need to contact financial aid, you can go to the third floor and speak with them directly. Um, it also has the GEO office, which is the Global Experience office. So Global Experience is one of our four pillars of learning once again. So a lot of students will go abroad at some point during their four years here. And there's also a lot of financial aid for students who want to go abroad. Um, so they have like scholarships available. My friend who just went, she got to go completely for free um, through a scholarship. So they have a lot of aid available. Um, over here we have Dodge Hall. That's home to the DeMore McKinn School of Business. I also spend a lot of time in this building because I work in the advisor's office. So if you ever wanted to come say hi, you can do that and we can be best friends for like 30 seconds. Um, and then over here we have L Hall, which is where we just were. Um, usually it's like really pretty in the middle, but they're doing construction right now, unfortunately. So it's like, eh. But does anyone have any questions about Crenshaw's Quad? We'll be crossing the street to the other side of Huntington. because it's surrounded by a lot of freshman dorms. Um, behind me is Spear Hall, and we're gonna be going in there a little bit later to see what a typical freshman dorm looks like. Um, over here is Sesson East, which is connected to Sesson West. There's White Hall, which is across the street. And then there's some more freshman dorms down this street here, and then some more in Hemingway, which is the street behind this one. Um, but in order to get into your residence hall, you show your Husky ID to a proctor. Um, so there's a proctor securing all of the dorms on campus. And that's just because, once again, we live in the city, so it's not really safe to have people like going in and out of the buildings. Um, so you show the Husky ID to the proctor, and then to get into your room, you use your Husky ID, put it on your tap lock, put in the number, boom, you're in. Um, you pretty much need your Husky ID for everything. Um, so getting into your res hall, getting into your dorm, 
getting into the dining hall, doing laundry, printing, you need it for everything. Um, if in the event that you misplace your Husky ID, you can download Seaboard, which is an app, and it has like a virtual ID, which you can pretty much use in the same way that you would use your regular ID. Um, we have LLCs in all of the freshman dorms. LLCs are living learning communities. So basically you fill out a questionnaire and they ask you about like um, all of your hobbies and your major and things like that. And they kind of pair everyone on your floor with something that you all have in common. Three dining halls here on campus. One is in Stetson East, one is in Stetson West, and then we have one across campus in International Village. Um, everyone has their preference. I prefer Stetson East, like I was saying earlier. Um, so as a freshman, you're required to have a meal plan. So your plan includes a certain number of swipes that you can use in the dining halls per week. So you can choose five, 10, 15, or 18 meal swipes per week. And then with that, you also have dining dollars. Um, those are kind of like regular dollars that are on your Husky card. So you can use that at any of the vendors that are on campus and then a lot of like surrounding um, restaurants will accept it as well. A lot of places on Huntington accept the Husky card too. So it's kind of like you get a lot of variety in your eating. Since you don't always want to eat in the dining hall, you have like, options. So that's why I like the dining dollars. Um, in terms of the rooming process, it's completely random. So you fill out another questionnaire about how you like to live your life and things like that. And then housing will pair you up with someone who has similar living styles as you. And that's how you would get your roommate. Um, if you mingle over the summer and you meet someone who's really cool and you want to room with them, you can put their NUID on your um, housing application and then that's how you get paired up with them. So you're guaranteed dorms as freshmen, right? Yeah, so um, you're required to live on campus for the first two years, but you're guaranteed housing for all four or five years. You never have to worry about being homeless. Well, most of these rooms are doubles, so you and one other person. Um, there are some triples and quads available, but those are a little bit more rare. So for the most part, it's going to be you and one other person. Um, there's two bathrooms on each floor, one for girls, one for boys. Um, they are communal style. All of the floors are co-ed, so you'll be living with boys and girls on your floor. Um, the rooms are not co-ed, though, so don't worry about that. Um, also, the buildings do not have AC, um, so these buildings are a little bit old, so they just didn't come with AC in them, um, so that's why, so most people would just get a fan and that's how you survive. If you're an honor student though, um, you will live in East Village, and East Village is kind of like towards Princeman's Quad. Um, one of the perks of being an honor student is that you get better housing than everyone else, so um, those rooms have like AC and they have their own private bathrooms and stuff like that, so if you're an honor student, you got AC. So we're going to be going inside to see what a typical dorm looks like. It's not the most exciting thing ever, but it is what it is. two others on the Columbus side of campus. So there's one in International Village and then there's one called Squash Busters. This is where most people will go to get their workout on. Um, so it's divided into three floors. The first level is kind of like a food court style so you can eat some food, study, hang out with your friends, do all that fun stuff. The second level has a lot of cardio equipment and a rock climbing wall. And then the third level has, um, has a weight training room. It has an indoor track and um, basketball slash volleyball court, it has some classrooms, and then it has some more cardio equipment as well. Okay, so we're going to be crossing the street to the other side of Huntington again. You guys already know the deal, only cross when the signal is on. students who are under 21 and can have alcohol with students who are over 21. 
corner and kind of to the left is the MFA, which is the Museum of Fine Arts. Um, it's free admissions for all Northeastern students, so I also encourage you to take a look at that as well because there are some amazing galleries in there, amazing sculptures, and some great documentaries that I really like. So I'm like inside of a classroom now, so we can head to the floor. one professor, um, but don't be surprised if you go into an introductory level course and there's like 200 other kids in your classroom. That's totally normal. A lot of support to help you do well in your classes. Um, so for example, the professor will give a lecture two to, three, two to three times a week. And then on top of that, he'll have about three to five TAs to assist him with his class. Um, the TAs run their own classes outside of the lecture and they basically just review everything that was talked about in the, in the professor's lecture. Um, there's also tutors that are available. These are students that have taken the class before and have done really well in them, so you can go directly to them for one-on-one -on -one help. And then on top of that, the professor has office hours twice a week, so you can go directly to the professor and ask them any more additional questions if you would like to do that. Um, on top of that, you also will have an academic advisor and a co-op advisor. Um, your co-op advisor will probably be introduced a little bit towards your co-op. Um, but you will have your academ academic advisor and they'll help you all throughout your four years. So there's a lot of support available for students. Um, so our curriculum follows a new path. Basically, instead of having 13th grade, where you take like a standard reading, writing, math, science class that you've probably already taken in high school, um, the new path allows you to create your own schedule that's flexible to what you want while still pushing you towards graduation. So there's like eight new path requirements that you have to take throughout your four years. Basically, the new path just allows you to create your schedule based on what you want to do while still helping you towards graduation. So it's not like a waste of money for you to be taking electives or anything like that. Um, we also have co-op, which is a big buzzword. You've probably heard all about it by now. Um, co-op is a six month period where you're not taking any classes and you're not paying tuition, where you're in a job applying what you've learned in the classroom to the real world. Um, I think co-op is advantageous for a couple of reasons. One, um, a lot of students who do co-op will have job offers waiting for them before they even graduate. And I know that takes a lot of stress off of students and parents' shoulders. Um, but let's just say you're one of those students that don't have a job offer waiting for them. You still have between six and 18 months of tangible work experience that you can put on your resume, which a lot of other students who are in neighboring Boston schools um, can say that they have. Um, most co-ops are paid. The average salary is about $17 an hour. Um, the only time you're not going to be getting paid is if you work for like a nonprofit organization or something like that. But for the most part, you will be earning money. Um, you can do co-ops in Boston. You can do them domestically across the United States, or you can do it internationally in your country of choice. There's a lot of options for doing your co-ops. We'll be heading outside this way. upperclassmen dorms. Um, upperclassmen housing is typically apartment style, so you're looking at private bedrooms, private bathrooms, a kitchen, and a living room. It's way nicer than the dorms that you guys saw earlier for freshmen, so once you get past freshman year, housing is tremendously better. Um, but yeah, that's what this place is. We also have West Fest in the fall, which is kind of like a carnival style event that goes on. So we'll have like food, games, project, music, all of that fun stuff, and a lot of people will go to it. Um, I've had a really good time um, going to West West in the fall with my friends, like just ate the barbecue, we got like our pictures taken and stuff, so it was a really fun memory that I had. Um, so housing is guaranteed for all four or five years on Northeastern's campus, so you'll never be homeless. There's always a place for you to stay. Um, housing is required for the first two years. That's pretty much it. 